I'm not very good, am I? I think I need some tuition. Fortunately, I've come to the right place. I'm here at a session of Sefton Art Group, one of the northwest of England's premier art groups. And these people can paint. I mean, really paint. The group has around 100 members, and we're set up by artist Roy Mundy. And if I can find him, he'll be able to tell me a little bit more about the group. Okay, folks, gather round. What I thought I'd uh, speak about is the that famous Belgian artist Henri Magritte. Uh, for anyone that is not aware of who he is, um, he's quite a character, really. He, he always painted with a suit on, shirt and tie, and was uh, always wearing a bowler hat when he went out about town. There was an exhibition at, at the Tate a few years ago, which we went to. And it was fascinating, it really was. For me, personally, it was a mixture of Picasso and Salvador Dali. But if, it's well worth having a look on Google to see his works. But he had a, a, a unique talent, coupled with a really mischievous uh, side to him. So I thought what I'd do, I'd look a couple of things up myself and see what, uh, what you think of these. This, this one was off the internet. Yeah, this is the sort of thing that he would do. And then I thought, well, what am I going to do myself and see if our colleagues and friends could uh, depict what this is? Anyone know what that might be? Yeah, yeah it's a giraffe passing the window. I forgot to put the clock in. <laughs> anyway, this one here, uh, another one. See what you think of this one. What do you think that might be? No, really. No. Anyone else? It's two Mexican driving a tandem. Really, then? Not all. And here we come to Omni and Greece. Now, because he was such a famous painter, there was an American uh, billionaire that was mad on uh, Buffalo Bill and that era and the campaign of the Battle of the Little Big Horn. <clears throat> anyway, he got in contact with Henri and he said, look, I'm, I need a painting, abstract. He said, but I want a painting of what I think what came into Custer's mind at that Battle of the Little Big Horn. He said, money's no object. He said, there's no rush. I'm going away for a couple of months. I'll give you a ring when I get back and we'll see what you've produced. So we had a bit of a think about it, played around with different drawings. And this is what it came up with. Okay. Anyone, any idea what that might, might mean? No? Okay. Well, what it did is it's holy, mackerel, look at all them effing engines. <laughs> Have I just done that for them? <laughs> I think I've been stitched up. Anyway, there was this couple that, uh, from Wigan. Sorry. There was this couple that lived in Wigan, born and bred uh, Wigan for, what, 60 plus years. Never been out of Wigan. Nowhere at all. Not even abroad. And they were celebrating the Ruby wedding anniversary. And she's sitting there, Mark, and this in a bag, and she said, I, I booked us holiday in Benidorm for a long week, all inclusive. So he, he's absolutely gobsmacked. He said, well, <clears throat> I don't know the language. He said, are we going to order a beer? She says, all you do is you talk really slow. So he's happy with that. So he's doing a bit of practice in, in Spanish. And anyway, the, the day comes for the flight, and off they go. Get over to Benidorm, transfers go well, right up to the room. As you do, case out, in, shorts on, black socks, white pumps, vest, cap, down to the bar, you see. So he goes to the bar, sits her down, and he says, uh, to the bar, and he says, uh, Hola! Two pints of a, a lager, please. 
And the Bible says, you're from Wigan. <laughs> I's from Wigan too. <laughs> so the fellow says, well, if you're from Wigan and I's from Wigan, how come we's talking Spanish? <laughs> It's tough, sir. Every time I paint a portrait, I lose a friend. John Stringer Sarge is an American painter. Who said, if I like it, I say it's mine. If I don't, I say it's a fake. Pablo Picasso. And if you, this is just food for thought. If you think about the painting of The Last Supper, everyone's seen it, you're familiar with it? Yeah. Yeah. What I want to know is why there was no one on the other side of the table. Hello, Roy. Hello, Karen. There's a lot of joviality going on oh, there in the there? hall. Yes. Oh, I see. That's probably Steve telling his jokes, isn't yes. it? Yes, and not such a good joke either. <laughs> yes, yeah, not very funny, but don't tell him I said yeah. that. Well, I mean, we do take our art seriously, but at the same time, we are a very social actively, uh, active group as well. Yes. You know, so, um, yes, it's, it's a fun occasion as well. Yes. As well, well, they all seem that. quite close and they seem to sort of be quite friendly with each other as well. Well, they've been nice. coming for a number of years. Mm -hmm. I mean, the longest members have been coming approximately since the group started, which is going back almost 10 years. Right, so can you tell me a little bit more about how Sefton Art Group was first yeah. formed? Well, it was the Sefton Council. They had, a, um, they had Sefton Arts, which they sort of set up to encourage people to engage, not just in the painting and, and drawing, tap dancing or whatever. Um, so that's what started, and they asked me to, to set up a group, which I did. And then the other classes quickly followed on that until the present day which now makes us one of the largest um, practicing art, art groups in, in the Northwest. So how many members have you got in this particular group? Um, probably a hundred. Yeah, roughly a hundred members who come on a weekly basis. That's a lot of members. It is. What sort of age range have you Well, got that's a good here? question. The majority of people who come to me are people who perhaps enjoyed art at school. Then life took over, so they never had the opportunity. Mm. Then once they reached retirement age, suddenly they found time on their hands. Yes. Mm -hmm. And really, that's it. All they need to come along with is a desire to want to do it. They don't need any skills. Great. A lot of people are put off taking a part simply mm -hmm. because they think, or they've, they've, they've heard this myth that you, to do art, you must be born with a natural yes. talent. That's untrue. Mm -hmm. Learning art is un, uh, uh, like learning many di uh, disciplines, whether it's baking a cake, riding a bike, driving a car. So how really long does a session last? We have two hourly sessions. Um, we go for 10 weeks and then members enrol them for a further 10 weeks and we go through the whole year. We do take a break in August. That's great. So do you hold any special sort of events or exhibitions? We do. We have two main exhibitions a year. Um, one in the spring and then another one at Christmas. And that allows the, you know, the members to not just display their work in front of the public, which allows them some feedback. It also allows them to sell one or two paintings. So we get some money back coming into their hobby, as it were. Oh, that's great. And we have other locations as well, pop-up shops, where we set up. Ah, right. Yeah. So there's something going on virtually through the year. Sounds like a very busy year. It does. And then on top of that, of course, we any big exhibitions which come to the local area. Um, and then I organise trips to those. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Last year, we, we, we took them to see Francis Bacon exhibition, which was held locally. So they get a lot of um, inspiration from, from doing that. So it's not just an art group, it's like a no, friendship group as well, is. and it's also yeah. gives them lots of activities. That's that it. I try to broaden together. their artistic horizons, yes. and that yeah. then in turn feeds through into the work that they produce in the class. And also recently, uh, the members featured in a BBC television programme, and they found that both interesting and stimulating. Sounds great. Roy, I believe you hold some special events throughout the year. Um, yes, we had a, a, a very big exhibition in, in 2014. That was to commemorate the outbreak of the First World War in 1914. So all the members played an active role in that. It wasn't just about um, paintings and drawings. We had people, collectors, who came in with 
memorabilia that had been gathered on the battlefields of the First World War. So we th also then invited in the local school, so we had children coming in, and that was part of their education so they could learn the history of the First World War. So that was a big event for us. Uh, coming up in the near future, we have another big event where the members are going to be working with the local Wildfowl Trust. And uh, last weekend, for example, they went out with their sketchbooks and got some preliminary drawings or indeed paintings. The idea being that over the next few months now, they can turn those, those drawings into finished paintings and then we will have an exhibition throughout October. So that's a big event coming up. That sounds absolutely yeah. amazing. Well, it allows yeah. them to take on a project. Yeah. Um, as opposed to just coming in and working from a photograph, yes. it's a whole project. We're well, bringing it to life, aren't you? Exactly, yeah. and so it, it engages them over a period of months, as opposed to just a week by week. We now have a short film of the group's special events. Most of you will have heard of the English port of Liverpool. After all, it's where the Beatles came from. But few of you will have heard of the Liverpool Pals. No, it's not the game of a group of people who get together occasionally for a drink. It was more serious than that, much more serious. In 1914, German troops marched into Belgium. Britain stood by its long-standing treaty with the Belgians and declared war on Germany. World War I had begun. But Britain had a problem. Its regular army at that time was too small for the task in hand, and many troops were already involved in keeping the peace in Ireland. The country needed more soldiers, and it needed them quickly. Then an army general had an idea. Why not create regiments of pals, local groups of people who worked and lived together and who could train and fight together? Liverpool led the way, and within a short time, Nearly 5,000 men had enlisted and, in 1915, they crossed the English Channel to confront the advancing German army. In 1918, when the war was finally over, only half of the Liverpool Pals came home, and many of those who did return had been badly injured in the fighting. As a tribute to them, a memorial in the form of two large bronze friezes overlooks the concourse of Liverpool's main railroad station. In 2014, Sefton Art Group, one of England's premier art groups, held a special event to commemorate the centenary of the outbreak of World War I and to remember the Liverpool Pals. The local community and schools were involved and there was an exhibition of World War I-inspired artwork and a display of war artifacts. The event culminated in a special evening with some visitors wearing period costumes and a choir singing songs that were popular during the time. Build a little home for two or three or four or more in love and for me and my girl. Although primarily concerned with the production of fine art, Sefton Art Group tries, when possible, to work with the local community and to raise funds for good causes. A further example of this is the special exhibition held to support the Walking with Giants Foundation, which provides support to sufferers of primordial dwarfism. Alex, a young sufferer of the condition, enjoyed every minute of this special event. These are some nice examples of how art and the community can come together. Roy, what sort of tuition do you provide for the members? Can they have one-to-one -one tuition, private lessons, or is it more of a group thing? It's more of a group thing. Um, so what happens is, as I said, many people, when they take up art, um, they, they seem to think you've got to be born with a natural talent, which isn't true. So when they come to me, I structure the classes so that they start learning from the very basics, which involves drawing. Um, I had to draw in proportion to get accurate drawings. The key to painting is drawing, and the key to drawing is measuring. So I teach them what's known as the thumb and pencil method. They can learn that in a matter of a few weeks. From then on, like any other discipline, it's a question of practice. Mm. Come week seven, week eight, that's when I first introduce them to paint. And we usually stick with acrylic initially because it's a more forgiving medium. Otherwise, people will apply paint 
to a painting as they would if they were painting the walls at home. Mm. Uh, and then after that we have colour theory. So come week 14, week 15, they've learned many of the basics. And then once they learn the colour theory, they're able to work a bit more independent of me. Mm -hmm. uh, and then beyond that, I introduce them to other media, watercolour, pen and ink is a very popular one. And so, and also once they get a good understanding of the basics, then they can go on to be learning how to paint abstract. And so, the, as I say, the course is structured, they teach them all the basics, and indeed beyond the basics so that eventually they can work independently of me. It sounds great. Do you feel that the members progress very quickly because of that tuition? That depends on how much input they do it themselves. Um, some of the members come along and do it just in the art class, so they find it more of a social activity. Those who take it more seriously, they work at home, right. and they tend to be the more successful ones. Yes. And uh, that's usually a problem when we have the exhibition, yes. because they can sell a number of paintings in one exhibition. So practice makes perfect then? It does. Yeah. It really does. So we've been talking about your members exhibiting their work. What sort of locations have you exhibited in? Um, over quite a wide area locally. Uh, a big exhibition was after a £17 million refurbishment at the Atkinson Arts Centre in Southport. We were the first group invited to put on an exhibition to celebrate the opening and that was very successful and then we also worked locally again uh, in any uh, any areas where we feel we could put on an exhibition especially pop-up shops so the members get quite involved in that as well sounds great yes roy um just tell me a little bit about some of your members a little bird tells me that they've got something more than artistic skills they've got some sort of more like cultural oh, skills yes yeah, that's very true um, one of the members is the leader of a, a band oh right and then we've also got two published authors within the group that's fabulous roy i believe you also provide specific training in fields such as portrait painting yes because portrait painting is such a tough discipline where well, do you have to dedicate weeks to it so yes as well as portrait um drawing, also life drawing, that's also oh, very nice. important. And then there's other more specialist subjects, working with brush oil, for example, which is a very creative medium. Not many people are aware of, of brush oil. It works rather like watercolours, but it's a very vibrant medium, gives you very vibrant colours and it allows you to be very abstract with it as well. Yes, I've seen little elements of that. I've walked around that's the art exactly group as yeah. well and it's, yeah. it's wonderful, the colours. And pen and ink is a very n another one which is very popular as well. And of course, within that speciality, again, we get members to work on bigger scale, something they probably never even thought of before, mm -hmm. working bigger scale together with bigger brushes. So we then don't bother with the uh, traditional paint brush, we yeah. use decorator's brushes. Ah, and right. once they use bigger brushes, then other things happen. It opens up their uh, creativity yet again. I've got to say, I'm certainly getting, a, getting an education today as well in the world of art. Yes, good. Is it possible for people to progress beyond your art classes? Oh, certainly, because we've got members who approve that. Um, they get a very good foundation in art coming to the classes. And then we get a number of members, well, several anyway, that come to mind, who came to the classes purely as a leisure uh, activity and got really seriously involved with art and then went on to do uh, a degree in fine art. One of the members, Grace, in fact, in the next few weeks she will graduate um, after doing a three-year fine art degree. In fact it was a combined degree, art history and fine art. So she first came to the class as a leisure painter in her early 60s, fell in love with it and now she's coming off the end of a, a fine art degree. So, so it's yes, never too late. It's never, never too, too late. late. No. And you've got something for everybody. That's right. And then a more recent member again approaching the age of 40 and he's now started the first year at Chelsea Fine Art. That's wonderful. So people can, they can take really it to whatever level they want. Yes. yes, absolutely fabulous. So something literally for everybody, whatever level you're at, exactly. come along and uh, yeah, join and in and, and just make you start. can accommodate for everybody. Thanks Roy for your time today. Now if it's okay with you, I'm going to go back downstairs and talk to some of the new members. Thank you Karen. Bye for now. Hi Steve, how are Hi. you? Fine, thank you. And you? Great, thanks. I'm really impressed with this uh, piece of artwork at the moment. Can you tell me what it is you're actually painting? It's actually the um, Chinatown in, in Liverpool. Um, are, are you aware of this? Have you seen it? Yes, I have actually seen yeah, it. Yeah, it's quite stunning, isn't it? Yes, it's brilliant. Um, so I'm attempting to paint this 
painting, not being too precise and in a form of abstract way. But uh, there's a lot of work to do with it. It's going to take me quite some time. Great. I can see you've actually got a printout here of what you're actually painting. Does that help you with, with what you're doing? Very much so. It's, it's what's known as the, the grid system, which Roy has uh, helped me to get the painting right, because if the drawing isn't right, then the painting won't, won't be right at all. But it, it, uh, particularly when there's a lot of information on the, in the picture, it, uh, it helps to make sure that it's, it's right. Great. So that must have taken you a long time to, to convert that onto there with the grid system then and having to mark out all the separate squares. Yeah, it things. took me about three hours. Right. And so what sort of medium have you used on this canvas? This is acrylic. Yes. Do you prefer to work with acrylics? Um, it's, a, it's a great medium because it's very forgiving. Yes. Uh, but I do use other, other mediums. But... Uh, on a canvas, uh, mostly acrylic. Paint. I've noticed as well with the acrylics, you can get a really sort of quite a bright colour with a lot of these colours. It really stands out. It's quite strong, isn't it? it is, is. That, is that a thing of acrylic paint then? Uh, it is, but I like bright colours anyway. You do. So, so um, you've gone for the bright colours for this. That's right. That's lovely. So how long do you reckon this is going to take you to complete? About another four weeks, I think. Right. A four weeks of three-hour sessions. Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's great. And, and how will you finish it off? Will you, will you do any edging or anything around it with any pens or anything? Um, or will you keep it as it is? There may be other, other mediums that are introduced yes. into it to get the, the fine details the fine in. Detail. But other than that, no, yeah. all, most of it will be acrylic. Oh, that's looking really great. I really look forward to seeing Cheers. that at the end. Thanks very much for your Thank time, you. Steve. Cheers, Thank you're you. welcome. Hi, Pete. Hi. I like this landscape. And Thank those you. clouds are really beautiful. Right. Can you tell me how you got that effect? Uh, I used the acrylic spray paint to get the blend between the sky and the clouds and you get a very smooth blend between the colours to, to get that effect. Is it difficult to use spray paint on canvas? Um, it can be difficult, it needs practice. Right. And also um, you need well ventilated space oh, good. because of the other chemicals in the, in the spray cans. Bit of so, a health and safety uh, tip there. Yeah. Good. So, um, what inspired you to paint this, uh, this picture? Um, other painters, really. Yes. Um, because I don't think anybody... If you do something creative, original, you're a genius. And I don't think there's many geniuses around. Um, so people, when they're starting, when they're beginning to paint, they tend to copy. Right. Even the great artists mm -hmm. did that. And how many years have you been painting? Um, seriously, about four years. And is that with Sefton Art Group? Yes, right. yes. Um, I had a little double off and on with other art groups, but not seriously. I did uh, GCE art when I was 15, mm -hmm. 16, and uh, I hadn't done anything else seriously till I arrived here at Sefton Art Group. So um, I'm well into it. Pete, what medium do you prefer to paint with? Uh, acrylics, basically, because um, it's the kind of medium where if you do make a mistake, you can go over it. <coughs> it's very difficult to do that with, say, watercolours. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to more or less get it right first time. So it, it sort of makes up for mistakes. That's of course, good. I never make it. Yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course not. Of course not. Well, that's a super painting, and uh, I wish you all the very best. Right, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pete. Thank you. Hi, Pete. How are you? Very, very well, thank you. Good. This is a stunning picture. Can you tell us more about it? Um, it's just something that when I really love the Spanish architecture, I like the, the mountain villages in, in Spain, and um, so I, I just thought that I would try and do something but with a bit of a modern twist. Yes. Um, so this is just something, it's quite straight lined, um, but I do quite like working with straight lines, angular things rather than abstract, mm -hmm. really. And how long did it take you to get to this stage? Um, so this actually, this painting probably took me about four or five hours to do um, because it, there's a lot of drawing of lines yes, in to do yes. before you actually put any paint on the canvas. Mm -hmm. And how did you draw the lines? What did you draw the lines in? A pencil, just yes. pencil and then just go over it with the paint and then highlight it with the, with um, ink on top. Mm -hmm. What sort of paint have you used? Acrylic. On acrylic, yeah. 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 I, I too like working in acrylic because mm -hmm. you can cover your mistakes. Right, and of course there's no mistakes. <laughs> no, not at all. No, no, no. not no. On at all in this. That's one. lovely. It makes me feel like I need to go on holiday. Me yeah. too. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you ever so much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Cheers. 
Sometimes when there are spaces available, Roy likes to take on new members. Now some of these members have no experience at all, some of them have a little bit of experience and some are very accomplished artists indeed, but they just want to improve or expand some of their skills a little bit further. I'm going to go and say hello now to some of the new members. Hello new members. Hello. Hello Donna. Hello. Hi, can you tell me a little bit about how long you've actually been working with Sefton Art Group now? This is my third week with Sefton Art Group. I was originally with Lydia's, um, but there were some problems I had with perspective, so I've come to Roy and he's helping me to get the perspective on measurements. So is this your first piece that you've been working on, or have you got anything else that you've done? It's the second one. I've been using the grid system, um, and now we're like doing the thumb and pencil measurements. So we get everything in proportion. In proportion, that's great. So yeah. was this your choice of... Uh, this was Roy's <laughs> choice. Roy's choice, the bottle yeah. of wine note. Yeah. <laughs> you did get an empty one. <laughs> oh, what a shame. That's such a shame. So do you feel like you'd like to expand further and use other forms of medium? Yeah, I always like to use other pieces. Yeah, I do use um, abstract paint at the moment. Right. Um, but then, if and are you enjoying the time here? Are I they do. a friendly bunch? They are friendly, yeah. They oh, made me feel really welcome. Oh, that's well, great. Yeah. Thank you very much, Donna. You're welcome. Hello, Gail. Hello. This looks stunning. Can you tell me a little bit about this? Yeah, it's a, it's a scene from somewhere in Northamptonshire. Um, I walked there a few weeks ago with some friends, took this photograph, um, this is my second attempt, I um, did it in acrylics first and now I've moved on to watercolour, only because I felt as if I knew the subject quite well and because watercolour is harder, I thought I now know my subject. So I'll now move have from, a challenge. Yeah, move from the acrylics onto the watercolour. This is see how lovely. I can produce. So how many weeks has this taken you to get um, this, this is far? This is probably my second um, week at this. Yeah. And how long have you been a member of the group? Um, just over a year. Right. So you've learnt lots of new skills, I yes. would imagine. Yes. yes. Yeah. Could you yeah. paint before you came here? Um, I've dabbled over the years. Off and on, stood back, been busy in life, and then come back to it. Never had any formal training at all until you came here. Until I came here. Yes. Well, good. this is beautiful, and oh, uh, I look you. forward to seeing it finish. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Hello, Dave. I believe you've been here for about nine months now. Yes, it's about nine months now. Yeah. And a little bird tells me that you've been working on a lot of pictures lately that have had acrylic medium used. Um, I'm having a look at your picture here and it looks absolutely fabulous. Um, I've also heard that you've actually auctioned off some of your paintings in aid of local charities. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, um, we, we did a charity night for Queen's Court Hospice. Um, my wife was a patient there and um, I sold three paintings. I sold two on the night um, for they brought about £600 and then another lady asked me to do one for her um, which she paid £300 for, which was the Iron Man in Crosby. I did Red Room on the beach as well. And uh, so they raised around about £900 in three years okay. for Queen's Court. That's really interesting. Um, can you tell me also, what is your favourite medium? I, I noticed that you're using an awful lot of acrylics there. Is that your favourite medium ha or have you got another medium that you also like to use as well? I, I have used, I've used watercolour but I find acrylics far more forgiving, easier to use and um, it's quite enjoyable because it, it's like the old fashioned oil paints, you don't have all the set up and you just use it as watercolour but it's a lot more easier to use. It's been great talking with you today Dave and uh, I wish you all the best with the, uh, the next painting that you take on. Thank you very much.
finished. Well, that's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed learning all about Sefton Art Group. Join me next time when I'll be in Southport. But for now, I've got to get on with my painting. What's this? Roy? Take one. Action! Oh, sorry.